Imagine living the dream. Imagine leaving the city and the burbs behind to explore the barren and beautiful emptiness of our vast nation. We're about to take you to Australia's secret places, one in particular ancient and breathtaking, with some of the most stunning and, until now, secret landscapes in the country. Here's Alex Cullen with a grey nomad adventure on steroids. So if there's a track within the nearest 30 or 40 kilometres, that's even just a, a dirt track, uh, we're not going to go there. Why not just take a camper van? But it doesn't get to the places that we want to get to. We can, with this helicopter, get to places that really are otherwise are completely unreachable. And they, because they're unreachable, they are just pristine and beautiful. Just us, the ideal couple, <laughs> not. I wanted to get out into the bush, I wanted to take photographs, and now this idea of the helicopter just put it all together because I could use this helicopter for going out in the bush. What I'm trying to do with my images is make them give the sensation of what it was like to be there standing beside me when I was looking at that environment. So I'm trying to compose an image that goes right round like that. Here, for example, this Hammersley Gorge photo is 200 degrees wide. It's everything I could see in an arc in front of me by looking to my left and then turning to look straight ahead of me and then round to my right. Interesting detail as a bonus, like the galahs in this photo of gnarled dead river gums next to Coonji Lake in the Sturt Stony Desert. The trees are starkly silhouetted against a pre-dawn sky that was an amazingly deep pink colour. This image is full of interesting detail. Water eroded catacombs in Arnhem Land, exquisitely decorated both by nature and by Aboriginal painting. Obviously a wet season photograph, you can clearly see the rain cascading off the rocks. And here's just one more, also Arnhem Land. Wet season rains from the central stone country rushing down the Gomadia River towards the Arafura Sea. I used a very short shutter speed here to highlight the individual drops of cascading water. It's a really beautiful location and I'm enjoying taking the photographs and I'm hoping that perhaps by bringing these photographs back and showing them on my website and then uh, in my book and in galleries, we might be able to persuade the general public and more importantly our politicians that our environment is really beautiful and worth protecting. But while Richard has always loved photography and Carolyn trained as a graphic artist, they weren't always wealthy. Well, I started as a physicist. I wasn't too keen on being uh, in a lab and I ended up going into sales. I sold nucleonic instrumentation. I'll use the money that I've earned from selling my company to buy a helicopter. And so began 20 years of exploring. Twice a year, for a month or so, out in the never-never. And this time, 
they've agreed to take Sunday night. Here in the Territory's Gulf Country, what was once the seabed has eroded over millennia, leaving what looks from afar like some ruined civilization. They're called lost cities and they erode in a sort of, in the form of pillars. And they have amazing color and, and they have an amazing aura as well. I found that location when I was traveling back from to Sydney from Darwin one time and I discovered it had water running, like permanent water, river running between the orange pillars. I thought, that's really unusual, let's go and have a look at that. It gives you this amazing feeling, just, it, they feel like they have a, a, a spirit in them. You can just feel that in your bones, that there is a sense of history and past life and magic aura about them. Walking through these ancient columns, you can't help but feel like you're being watched. It's beautiful at night. Lying, you know, lying on the ground and looking up at the Milky Way when you're in the middle of nowhere is fabulous. And then out in these vast spaces are the people of the outback. Today, they've dropped in at Warragundu, an Aboriginal-run station in the Territory. It's very satisfying to think that there's an organisation out there that's training young Aboriginal people to be on their own tribal land and have that unbroken link with the past. Richard takes one of the traditional owners, Philip, for a joyride. Being a <laughs> Large prints of my images, many three or four metres long, have been on exhibition in regional galleries all over the country for the last couple of years. Here, for example, the Ipswich Art Gallery in Queensland. I've included most of my favourite images in our book, Remote and Wild, Seeking the Unknown Australia. Here I've explained the techniques that I have developed to create these very wide and highly detailed images. And Carol has described our somewhat unusual helicamping activities. We hope that by bringing the wilderness back in this way and showing the beauty of our natural environment, we will help create a greater awareness of its importance and encourage the desire to protect it.